Welcome back. And off we go. Electrophilic aromatic substitution mechanism time. As we saw earlier, we can make nitric acid dehydrate in the presence of sulfuric acid by first protonating the O to make it a better leaving group. And my pen just turned off. And my color's not right. Protonate the O to make it a better leaving group and then induce it to leave with the lone pair on the other O. Generating a super electrophile. And what is the nature of this super electrophile? It looks like this. N double O double O plus. And I hope I had the plus charge on the previous page. Let's see. And yes, we did. Called a nitronium ion. And we've generated nitronium. It can react with any of the pi electrons in benzene. Nitronium is a super electrophile and it's looking for any excuse to react with a pair of electrons. So even the reticent pi electrons of benzene react. The rate determining step would be this formation of cyclohexadienyl cation. That's right here. If we choose to put the NO2 group here, I'll draw it out this one time. And you have to be able to draw a proper either Lewis form or charged form for a nitro group at any time. So learn how to draw that. There's an H there. We haven't replaced it yet. And the other carbon that didn't, that lost its bond in the pi bond and never replaced it with anything is the cation. The cation must be adjacent on the adjacent carbon to the new group. And this species will not last long. It will re-aromatize. We need anything that looks even remotely like a base to take that H off. And yes, you generated hydrogen sulfate ion. Not the greatest base, but we've been using it for a long time now as a base. It was made in the first step and it proves that sulfuric, uh, sulfuric acid's role in this proceeding is that of a catalyst. We used it to make our nitro nitronium carbocation. I see, keep saying carbocation. Nitronium cation. And then we used sulfate ion to regenerate our catalyst. And you have nitrobenzene. Nitro is one of our new groups. We got to know how to draw it. We have to know how to name it. Nitrobenzene itself is a very common solvent for a lot of reactions. Uh, it has a nice high boiling point. So if you have a high activation energy, you can use nitrobenzene as your solvent. Next reaction, what's our new group? Uh, it looks like a methyl group. Where'd this methyl come from? Oh, it came from chloromethane. If you look back, this is the case where all three groups on the carbon are hydrogen. And we said what would happen if all three groups on the carbon, if R, R prime, R double prime equals H, no reaction, but star, this thing that we have to make is an electrophile because it's got a carbon with three H's on it and uh, what is going to amount to an excellent leaving group. So let's do that. The, the step that we care about is to generate a methyl with a better leaving group. Chloride's decent leaving group. A cationic chlorine is an exceptional leaving group. And it's gonna look like this when it's finished. We'll have the CH3 up here with the chlorine still attached. New bond to AlCl3 here. This chlorine is now a cation. It wants electrons back. And benzene says that methyl 
looks very electrophilic right now because it really doesn't want its electrons when chlorine's pulling so hard. And we get that. And we generate our cyclohexadienyl cation again. Let's see, we didn't use this pair of pi electrons. We didn't use this pair of pi electrons. We use that pair. We're putting a group down here for a reason which we'll discuss in our next segment. The group went down here. It didn't go in any of the other positions for some reason. Let's have the old H there, have the cation next door. And that needs to re-aromatize. And what's going to do the re-aromatizing? Well, if you look at what's left over, we have a Cl attached to an aluminum. And the Cl takes its electrons and says, hmm, I'd rather have an H than an aluminum. It's going to generate HCl, and aluminum losing electrons goes back to aluminum chloride. And yes, you're right, that makes it a catalyst. We have AlCl3 meow. There's a terrible three. The whole thing's gone. Meow. The cat's back. And it's ready to start over again. And if you look at the substituents, after you put a nitro on, the next group goes meta. Keep that in mind. That's the discussion point for our next segment is why does that group go meta? It has everything to do with a mechanism. And now we have this here. And I, I just realized we didn't finish our previous discussion of mechanisms. We went A, B, C, D, but we did not go to E. Your patience is definitely respected in this case. So how do we generate this electrophile? And look at my little electrophile moved away from his, uh, I remember was moving stuff around. He got out of his highlighter zone. All right, so this electrophile is called an acilium. Seriously, it's an acilium. Let's put it in black. And they're generated from our favorite, from our last test, a very reactive electrophile yet not reactive enough to react with benzene. That's an acid halide. That was our most reactive electrophile on our last test. Doesn't cut it for this test. And hey, we're generating a, a species involving carbon and a plus. And remember that, the, one, the two reactions that generate a, a plus on a species with a carbon electrophile, this one and this one, use the same catalyst. Aluminum chloride. So how are you going to remember the aluminum chlorides used to generate the carbon electrophiles and the iron chloride was used to generate the halogen electrophiles. How are you going to keep that straight? I don't know. You could borrow from your friend LL Cool J and saying going down to Cali, carbon electrophiles need aluminum. Cal. I'm help. I'm trying to help. I'm sorry doesn't work. LL Cool J is too old. I apologize. Except for LL, to LL Cool J. Because he's cool. It's in his name. I'll stop now. Okay, we've got our carbonyl Cl attacking aluminum chloride. And we've got Cl now bonded to aluminum with three Cl's. What did that look like before? Yep, it was an aluminum with a minus. What about the chlorine that has two bonds? That's a chlorine with a plus. Oxygen sees this situation, resonates downwards. 
kicks off ALCL4 with a negative charge. We called that a complex ion, didn't we? Generates our acillium and also generates Cl. ALCL3. If you remember, we had to use that piece too in the mechanism, but our electrophiles are a psyllium ion. And I didn't label it here, but that was an electrophile we made when it was secondary or tertiary. So now we're ready to finish that mechanism segment where we need this electrophile. And yep. There's an acid halide that is four meal chloride or methanoyl chloride. Four meal chloride. And how does it generate an electrophile? We can use what we just learned and combine it. The first step was to make this a better leaving group by putting not a proton on it, but a Lewis acid and then make it leave. We got red first, blue second. We can do that. We can get all the way, all the way to the triple bonded O. Second part was to resonate that down. Triple bond, this leaves. You'll need both pieces. And you're going to generate this right here. And if you're going to draw a C, that means you're also going to have to draw an H. And we got that. And we also have Cl attached to AlCl3. The aluminum has a minus. And for reasons we'll discuss pretty soon, the new group needs to go here. And how does that happen? Well, we attack the carbon to get the oxygen neutral. This is a common theme with any O plus, isn't it? You never attack the O, you always attack the adjacent atom. And then the O gets a lone pair. That's O's nature. And this would be your slow step, generating a cyclohexadienyl cation. Your two enes are still here and here. The new group is up here. There's an H up there and a carbonyl right there, aldehyde in this case. And where's the cation? And where's the NO2? My goodness, NO2 was there all along. This is a very unhappy cation, by the way. This reaction would be incredibly slow. If you looked back at NO2's structure, that's a an cation, and now you have a cation adjacent to a cation. That is slowing this thing down. In fact, I'm, I'm having second thoughts about choosing that as my product, but it's too late. I already have it there. You just got to do what you got to do. Making that bond a little bigger. How do we uh, get our aromaticity back? I have to make this pi bond. Something's got to grab the H, have to make a pi. We're going to regenerate our aluminum chloride as well. Cl takes its electrons. Uh, if you were curious before, we also made HCl. H bonded to Cl. Side products, you don't have to show me. I won't even show them on this one. Oh, that's not blue. That'll get us to the end, won't it? And you have this species here. If you had to name it, uh, you could name it a benzaldehyde. And benzaldehyde that has a nitro group on position two and a methyl on four. So four, four methyl two nitro benzaldehyde. 
And seeing as we have a couple seconds, we could name it as a toluene as well. If you're naming it as toluene, that's the methyl benzene on the bottom. That makes this position number one. So nitro on three and a carbaldehyde on four. So you got options. It's going to go toluene with a new word for carbaldehyde. And you also have to say there's a nitro on two. Reason I was sighing earlier is I was considering called it an ortho nitro toluene for carbaldehyde, but we only generally reserve ortho, meta, and para for di substituted benzene. So on a test, if you did that, I'd give you credit, but I'd warn you there's three groups on this benzene. But the naming with aldehyde, carbaldehyde at the end pretends there's only two groups to start with, doesn't it? So you have a good argument there. Pretend it's a disubstituted benzene, then say, by the way, there's an aldehyde. Snuck in a little nomenclature there, shortish segment here, but a nice place to stop and get ready for our theory of directing effects. Which group goes on second is the motivation for the next segment. So we're going to have groups already on benzene. And then the question is, where does the next group go? And we're going to find that out if we patiently wait. And I'll see you very soon.